Pedro, there's been so much talk, reports, speculation about who's leaving, who's staying, and can you confirm anything? I can confirm that there's always rumors, speculations, and all the sort of words that you may use in this situation. But I can confirm to you that I have started speaking with some players on a, on a 1v1 basis, so they know, I know, and we are the, the, the persons that need to know those situations at the moment. So we are working also about the players that need to come, about the new signs, and when we have it, we'll be delighted to present it to you. But more than that is, is pure speculation, and we don't work under speculation, and of course, we don't comment speculations. Can you confirm that Clint Hill will leave at the end of the season? I confirm to you that I spoke with three players so far, and those three players know what's going to happen for next season. And I know what is going to happen with them for next season as well. Is it difficult with the speculation? You've still got games to play and you might need those players in those games? Uh, just in one point. The majority of those speculations are coming from inside. And that's my main concern. So if they are coming from inside, I cannot stay that happy with that, with that situation. So we need to seal, first identify it, after seal what's going on. We are a big club. And the big clubs cannot have this sort of behaviors. We are rule and manage from inside out, but our way, not not the other way around. At least when I'm when I'm going to stay here, that that is going to be the way we need to to perform and work. No leaks, no leaks. I don't I don't care. I just tell you that we are working on it. Not myself, but everyone involved in the club, we have the responsibility to do it. But it's definitely one point that we need to understand. Can it be destabilizing then? I don't care. I don't care if it's destabilizing or not. Not myself. It's something that I don't like. But I keep doing my job. And someone is doing their job as well. Is it something unusual for you? Have you faced this before? No. I, I, I found it, for example, when I was in a big club as well, like Sporting of Lisbon. And the things were coming out just that easy. But I know that, for example, uh, now is ruling. Now is ruling with football in Portugal. Nowadays is Benfica. In those times were Oporto, and I can tell you something: nothing, but really nothing, is coming out from Benfica if they don't want it to be known. So that's the way they are. That's the reason they are being successful. And of course, with Oporto in those times, I used to remember that Oporto president was having one say, specifically in these moments in time when some players were coming on and the other players were moving. If something is coming on the newspaper and I'm dealing with you, our deal is done. I'm not going to do it. And I found it a very good principle. So they were successful and I tried to, to follow the path of the successful people, not the opposite. So we need to behave like that, definitely. You are doing your job, but we need to do ours as well. If you've got an unhappy player, an unhappy member of staff, and they say they're, or they're told they're leaving, how can you stop them Leaking. No, I cannot stop it. I cannot stop it. I mean, I need to educate them. And after, if I know that the, those things are going in that direction, if you are identifying that, that those situations are coming from the players, I need to act after that. But it's part of our work, uh, as I told you, and we are working on it as well. Have you been surprised by the intrigue there is about this club? Things go on, on no, the I, I just give you some examples between our club and clubs from abroad. But I can give you also other examples between us and the other club that we are going to challenge, believe me, from, from now and from, 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 from ever. Do you are seeing the same thing from the other side? Are you seeing the same thing from the other side? It was you know, intriguing. And okay, but not at the same level. So maybe something like part of a learning process that we need to understand. I know you don't want to speak about specific names, but how far along are you with recruitment for, for this summer? I hope to be <laughs> near the end. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are dealing. We are dealing with the clubs. We are dealing with the players. We, are, we need to deal also, of course, with the agents. They are part of the process. But everything is, is, is rolling on the direction we, we intend to. So we have more or less more three weeks of time before we restart the, the next season. So we are working on it and we hope to have it sooner rather than, than later. 
all the sides. How difficult is it when you need to get your squad together very quickly for the Europa League to, to get players in it? It's stage? part of the process. It's part of the process and it's part of being professional. I mean, if you are professional, we have a group of players that are also professionals. They understand that the things in football are moving this way. And it's also a question of being clear and frontal to everyone. I mean, I'm giving the face all the times, all the moments, and especially when this situation about decision and 1v1 needs, um, needs to take place. Ben Hennigan of Motherwell, is that one on your radar? It's an, another speculation. It's another, maybe an, another, another sort of information. I need to tell the, the media guys that I'm not receiving the cuttings from the last day, so I'm not following what the speculation is going on. Are you aware of the player? Is it, is it just not on your radar? Or? I'm aware, and I told you once again, I think I don't, I, I'm not counting my, the number of my press conference so far, but I think I'm going to repeat it at least for the, for the tenth time. Uh, that means that I'm assessing on the youth level, squad level, Scottish players and international level as well. When uh, you look at the squad you have, you're up against the Hearts team who have struggled under a, a new manager. Do you see similarities between Rangers and Hearts with new managers coming in and trying to totally change what they want and trying to educate players on what they want? For how long is Yen with the team? Uh, in November, December. So it's having at least six, yeah, much more time. But I do believe so. I mean, he, he worked, for example, with uh, with Nuno from uh, from Oporto, Oporto coach at this moment. He worked with him in Riwav, and he worked with him in Valencia, if I'm not wrong. So that means uh, that we Portuguese coaches, we have uh, uh, almost sharing the same philosophy, which is the tactical prioritization. And it's not a, an easy thing to understand just like that in order to understand what's going on on the training sessions and the transfer that we want to the players to perform, the relation between the, the training sessions, the analysis of the opponent, your own team, and take it all the way just like that. But I can tell you something, I don't know about Yen. I know that we did it in, in Portugal, it's, it's easier, I mean, it's the philosophy. We did it in Mexico, we did it in Qatar, and we are going to do it here as well. Pedro, how is um, Danny Wilson just on your side wearing a knee brace? Sorry? Danny Wilson. He... Danny. Danny, we need to wait for uh, for Tuesday to see to see what's really going on and uh, to see the time that is going to be out. Definitely is not going to play um, these last three matches. You, a few guys out injured now as a kid tell about you know, just how, how you're going to put together a team for these last three games. Uh, if I have to use, if I need to to use the use the use plays, I use it. For example, Jamie Jamie got on the last one and he did it according to my opinion very very good. So they also players that belong to our club. They are training with us sometimes in a regular basis, so can be can be an option as well. A knee injury is it, Danny Scott? Uh, it's on the knee, yeah. Just for as you saw it on the last match, so that was the reason why he came out. Is it is it a loss? Case scenario in terms of how long he may be out I for. need to wait for for Tuesday because it's going to be uh, analysed by one specialist and we are just waiting to know what's going on. What do you expect from Hearts this weekend? We expect from Hearts, uh, I mean, what we analysed in the last couple of matches against Aberdeen and Partick, we know that they are changing the formation, changing the formation because they want to, to start with that formation from next season, so maybe Jan is uh, making some sort of experiment regarding to it and we know what we expect is one team that plays a positive football they try to have a positive approach we cannot forget that on the last confrontation they, they just beat us 4-1 so it needs to be present in our minds as well and above of all that we we, we we came from one reaction that we we gave on on the last game in Partick and we need to show that reaction in Ibrox again because the last time we, we played there it was a disaster and we know we know that we need to give another face and another rea strong reaction. Uh, Arts is on the way, so Arts is the team that we need to play on Saturday. A lot's been made about Michael Halloran and a couple of other players doing early training sessions on their own. Is that correct? And it seemed as if it was something that is untoward or unordinary. What, what's the actual situation? Just clear it up for us because it, a lot of misinformation uh, out there. You remember that. Uh, that week that Michael was not training with the team 
and you remember also the reason why. So I, train, I, I treat all the players in the same level. We have rules, we have principles, and those who are not following the rules and principles, which are more related to standards, they need to learn sometimes as, a, as an example to the others. So Michael, in that moment of time, he received one sort of schedule in order to feel aparted from the team. That was all. Uh, because he was aparted on the team, he needed to train in different hours. So that was the reason why he was training uh, earlier and later on. The other players you refer, I, I don't know, um, because, for example, Rob just trained with us twice. He's always injured down there. So he's not part of that, pro of that process. Harry trained with Michael early in the morning one time because he was not on the squad and because we were playing at 12 and the players that are not playing with the team, I mean, are not going on the game, they need to have an extra work. So if you give me another different schedule, if your team is playing at 12 and your staff is, is involved in everything, maybe you or the guys that put that or even the players that release that from outside, they need to give me a different schedule. But as long I am the manager of this team, I will manage the things my way because I'm here to defend the group of the players that want to follow the standards and I'm here to defend this club to keep higher standards all the time. And that starts in our professionalism level and on the work we need to perform on a daily basis.